Hello, cosplay lovers. Adam Savage here in my cave, and I am currently getting ready for New York City Comic Con. It is just about a month away, and it's time for me to get started. And the costume I've chosen for New York Comic Con is in fact an old costume I am rekindling my romance with. It is actually the costume that is the primary subject of my TED Talk, A Love Letter to Cosplay. It's No Face from Hayao Miyazaki's Spirited Away. Now, I wore that costume on San Diego's Comic-Con floor uh, something less than 10 years ago, and it was wonderful, this big white floating face over this void. Uh, but this time, I'm going to add a mouth. Not the mouth up here in the floating face. I'm gonna add the giant maw with which No Face begins to eat everything in the movie uh, at the beginning of act three. Uh, and this is, this is not unique. Other people have done this before. They've added the big mouth with teeth and the tongue and all that. Um, I am adding some real animatronic flair to this costume. I want it to be creepy. I want it to be awesome. And uh, this isn't me adding this to the No Face costume. I'm actually totally dismantling it, rebuilding it from scratch, except this time with a mouth. There's gonna be a lot of mechanical problem solving right up front to make this thing work effectively. And that's where we'll begin. All right, it's time to take him down. He's, <laughs> he's been there a while and he's not, he's not mechanically very sound. He's held together with a lot of tape and stuff. Oh, 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 okay, there we go. That's it. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh. Oh. So there's a, a couple of aspects of this costume I was really pleased with. One was this big vacuum form hood behind his head allows you to kind of both see at him, but also see through him. So he makes him kind of translucent, which was a unique aspect of this costume when I built it. Um, the difficulty with this no face execution is that the mask and the hood all hang off a kayak helmet off of my head. That is a bad deal, Ripley. That's a bad call. Uh, at Henson, they have a rule never to make the puppeteer support stuff on their head because it's so hard on your neck. So I have, uh, 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 I'm gonna build a new chest harness, similar to the one that I hold on to my Totoro costume with, in order to hold this on my shoulders and my torso rather than on my head. Uh, so he's actually likely to get a little bit taller, but I had to play around with all these relationships in order to understand exactly where the mouth goes. Cause it's gonna go right about here. Um, and the activation for it's gonna be my left arm. Uh, so I'm gonna have a fake left arm. Yes, it's, there's a lot of logistics. The first step is to kind of start to take this guy apart, figure out the main relationships, where this mask hangs in relation to my face, where my arms are, and then I determine where the mouth is. Where's the, how does this all work? Let's see here. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, whoa. A lot of fabric in a no-face costume. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Yep, it's all coming off. Hello, old friend. You could get an entirely new persuasion. I think the old no face was very hard to wear. It was all on my head. On a, the whole thing was sitting on this kayak helmet. That's bad for my neck. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, that's moving just a little bit, but that's fine. It's actually quite nicely balanced front to back. Plus, I've got this room here so I can, this can fall flat and the mouth sits here, so I'm kinda, right? So that's the next thing is for me to figure out exactly what the shape of the mouth is and how its mechanics work. 
but I had to get this part done first. That went faster than I thought. While Adam's working on the No Face build, he's tasked Mel and I with creating some food for No Face to eat. Yeah, and since like in the movie Spirited Away, No Face just consumes a bunch of different types of food, we're gonna probably try to start out with some fish, and then maybe some buns, and some ham, and all kinds of stuff. Yes. So we're starting out with this upholstery foam, uh, pretty much straight out of a chair cushion, it looks like. And we'll cut this up with a foam cutting saw to start, and then go in with shears and rough out the shape in a more uh, three-dimensional sense. Yes. Nice. All right. OK, that's a good, that's a good starting point. Cool. All right, so I am just taking the shears in and adding more refineness to my form. Um, I feel a little bit more comfortable doing it this way just because, especially for say the lips and stuff, I'm just afraid of taking too much off. And so I basically just start out by shaving away and more than likely what I'll also do is go into the sander and start to get, um, smooth out these sort of jagged edges. And essentially, start to look at it, especially now that I can just rotate and rotate and rotate. I can start to like sort of shape out what it's gonna look like in three-dimensional space. For like even finer details, I really like these little shears. They're so cute. You kind of you kind of feel like your Edward scissor hands or something, just trimming away at bushes, but they're really good for only taking a small chunk out. Once I've got the shape mostly roughed out, you can see it's got some good movement dimension. Uh, I wanna go ahead and hide all these trim lines by sanding it smooth and get a nice soft curve all the way around. I can do most of the rough cutting on the belt sander and then I'll go back in with the Dremel tool to get some of the finer details and more delicate parts like the tail. I can even get some detail like gills if I just gently run this. you can start to see I'll get a gill shape there. So I can get some details on here. I just have to be careful not to get too much purchase because the sander will bite and just pull the foam right into it. I don't know. Just, yeah. I know this is so inconsequential to the total thing, but I'm like, but you're hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna hmm. be right. Yeah, no, I feel you. And it's also like a dead fish. It's not a living fish that would That's have That's correct. Yeah, you just hand it's it. Just, yeah. Okay. I like this, though. Okay. That allows me to have super positive clothes. I can park it right there. And then that's nice and organic. What have you done to me? Sen! Sen! Rah, 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 rah. Okay, this is about the right distance, maybe just a tiny bit shorter. at here is uh, No Face's mouth. And my goal is that the mouth is hidden 
in No Face's costume until I reveal it. And the way I want to reveal it is that I will pull a lever underneath my No Face robes that will peel the lips back, exposing the teeth, there's one, uh, and then the mouth will open. Now, I'm gonna control the mouth from the bottom here. And this dynamic hinging where I've got it mounted up here, that's the end result of about a day of experimentation. At first I thought the mouth would go here and that my hand would be the tongue. It turns out there's not enough room inside the costume for me to do that, so I had to modify that and come up with a different arrangement. And I'm really happy with this one because uh, I didn't want to lock this top jaw to no face because if that's a, a perfect relationship, it doesn't look natural, it doesn't look biological. But by doing this, I end up getting this sort of ancillary movement out of it that I really like. <laughs> Every time I delve into animatronics, puppeteering mechanics for costumes, I end up having an even deeper amount of respect for my friends like Rick Baker or Mike Elizaldi or Richard Taylor, uh, all of them amazing animatronic engineers and designers with beautiful teams. I become <laughs> so frustrated by the process, right? Because I've got a certain amount of spring to lift these lips and to open this mouth, but as soon as I load this up with fabric, all of those mechanical relationships change and shift. Um, and I'm having trouble right now, if you can tell that I'm a little frustr frustrated, frustrated, um, because I'm, I'm not able to get the lips to fully extend um, with a single actuator. So I, I'm playing around with some mechanical advantages. Look, this whole thing, this is the check-in piece to camera in which I'm a little frustrated. So that's what's happening. That's why I'm sort of rambling about other people and their work uh, while I'm trying to solve mine. We have figured out how to make the teeth. We've got these beautiful teeth. There's only one right now, but this piece of white translucent plastic is actually an old cutting board, which uh, I cut and modified to screw down to this. So the teeth will be really nice and robust and they're gonna look Awesome. I just have to figure out a way to reveal them by opening the lips. I finished most of the sanding and smoothing out of the shape. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I'm just gonna go in with a Dremel and get some of these finer details around the mouth. It gives me a little bit more control because it's handheld uh, and it's got obviously a smaller surface area. Uh, once that's done, the fish, as you can see, has got great little wobble and wiggle to it. But in that scene where No Face is just gobbling all these pieces of food up, uh, we need it to have a little bit more structure because it's not very delicate. It's not a very graceful scene. So he's just going to be shoving all this food in his mouth and chomping it. And this tail seems a little bit fragile for that. What I'm going to do is take these pieces of rattan, which is rigid but has a little bit of flex, and I'm gonna use that to create basically a spine for the fish to give it a little bit more structural support. One thing that I learned on this project working with the foam, initially I thought of it as a purely subtractive process, so it's a monolithic shape and you can just carve and trim away. But Adam brought up the point that you can also add to it so it doesn't just have to be removing material like stone. Um, because of that, we can glue things to it, we can add all sorts of features like fins and leaves, uh, and it doesn't just have to be uh, removing. One of the things I have to do now is to glue my fish back together with some barge. I'm going to set that up to dry, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to cut some details like fins uh, and leaves for the carrots using some foam. Yeah. 
Nice. It's like a magic art. Mm -hmm. So this was a trick Adam showed me. It was just to take a plastic Chicago screw, poke through the head with an awl, and then feed the screw through. Then I can take these little pieces of styrene that I'm using for eyes and glue those right to the heads of the Chicago screw on either side. So it gives that indentation and a little bit of dimension around the eye socket. I think that'll look pretty good. Hit that with a little CA glue. And actually, I'm gonna do this the smart way and wait to attach these until after I paint. That way I don't have to worry about masking them. It even looks so cool with the, just the flatheads of the screws. Okay, yeah, so we have human teeth on this table and I figured why not put human teeth in fish? You know, just really enticing, has a soul now, that kind of sort of thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put fish in it. I'm gonna put teeth in fish, not fish in teeth. There we go. Glove you're on. One more with this glorious foam. <laughs> oh man. Oh dear. It's Listen. so disturbing. Yeah, was, you know, whoever thought human parts in other creatures would be mortifying. <laughs> It's I like think you are asking for the song because I love you creepy. Is that right? <laughs> no. Uh, no. No, but thank you for listening, Alexa. Yeah, seriously. Okay, <laughs> I can't tell you how many days that we have been plotting to shoot this piece to camera about catching up on the no face mechanism. And the reason is, is because I thought the mechanism itself was gonna take me like two days. The answer, like six, seven days of work. <sighs> However, my no face costume is back on track to be reconstructed this time with an entirely new development, which is the mouth. Here we go, you ready? Seth, what have you done to me? Ah, yeah. Yeah, I am so pleased. Let's talk a little bit about what it took to get here. So what we have here is a fairly straightforward animatronic mechanism, uh, a mouth with lips. The wrinkle being its size, it's a very large mouth, uh, and that I only have one hand for activation. My other hand will be no faces hand, so my left hand will do all the activation, which means I wanted to design a rig in which the lips and mouth moved with me only doing one thing. And, I think I tried like at least five different mechanical solutions. I'm not kidding, five completely different mechanical solutions of bolting different things to this, like cables and take up reels and bungee cords and stuff only to have everything fail until today. Uh, so what I have now is a mechanism in which the top lip is connected to the bottom jaw by a cable around a pulley. The bottom lip is connected to the top jaw by a cable going around a pulley. This is kind of a modification of Stuart Freeborn's mechanisms that he used in both Chewbacca and in Moonwatcher. Uh, Chewbacca obviously from Star Wars, Moonwatcher, the ape from 2001. And so here is that dynamic movement. I open the jaw and both lips curl back. 
which is really cool. I also decided to not do a hard mount of the jaw against my body, so I have this kind of movement going on. And that is this extra bit of dynamic motion that I think makes this feel far more biological. When you add into that these giant Delrin teeth, I haven't even, even added yellowing to them. When I do, it's gonna get real. Uh, and I've got a mechanism that is really robust and super awesomely disturbing. Um, the problem I kept having with this is because of its size, I wasn't making my mechanics robust enough. I've never built an animatronic this large before. Um, I needed heavy duty springs. I needed to use bolts instead of rivets because I was asking too much of the rivets mechanically. Um, there basically was a whole bunch of learning curves here for me to get to this point of a single handle on a pivot. Still a few bugs in the system. Activating the mouth. This is actually one of my failed attempts. At one point I thought I was gonna use cables to activate the lips so that I would squeeze a paddle, pull the lips back and then activate the mouth. And this was an animatronic paddle I made using Delrin aluminum and a wooden slot. I've got some uh, brass soldered tubes here to hold the cables and the housings so that they could go around and activate the lips. It was too much work to ask of such a thing and the travel I needed was too much. Uh, at this scale, it, it, the, the mechanics become kind of diabolical because you build it to work on its own, but then you add cloth to it and that adds all this other weight and torque on the system. And it doesn't sound like it should, but it actually is way more than you would expect. So let's take a closer look at the mechanism. What I've got is, uh, this is the top lip, this is the bottom lip. Both of them hinge here on the jaw. That's the main hinge for the jaw, the, the bottom hinge. And you can see that I've sprung the bottom lip to the top jaw, and I've sprung the top lip to the bottom jaw. And in addition, I have this cable. This is for model aircraft going around this pulley down to the bottom jaw. So as you can see, I move the bottom jaw, it pulls on the cable, it turns that pulley, and moves the bottom lip up, and the same thing is happening with the bottom lip. Um, I'm really, really abusing this right now. Uh, in my testing, I'm bringing everyone over and showing them, because if anything's gonna fail, I wanna know about it here instead of on the floor at New York Comic Con. Bop, 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 bop. Well, now that I've tackled what I think of as the hardest part of this build, which is the mechanics, it's hopefully slightly smoother sailing from here on in. Um, now it's time to work out how to actually cover this thing with fabric. And some of the pieces you saw in here were temporary just for me to sort of learn how the fabric will move, how it will change the mechanics as I put it on. And then uh, my goal is to make a single piece of fabric that covers the mouth and then drape the rest of the fabric on no face so it uh, hides me underneath. Uh, then I also have to work out how I'm supposed to see out of the thing. And I'm thinking maybe a camera with some uh, FPV goggles, or I may just put a screen here and try and see out of the mouth. Um, the last time I did No Face, the head was down about here. This time, as you can see, I've raised it about eight, 10 inches. And that is so that I hopefully have a little more ability to see through the mouth if I put a good screen there. I'm starting to do the final touches on these um, in terms of paint and finishing. So I've laid a base coat onto the fish and started to on these carrots. Uh, and what I'm doing is a airbrushing and spray paint detail. So I did a test yesterday uh, of some scales, which I airbrushed on here, and some uh, color patterns for the uh, koi fish. And I'm also doing some detailing on the carrot leaves. So we'll take a look at that. Basically what I did was I just cut some stencils out of cardstock and I'm using those as a mask to give it kind of a graphic pattern that matches the sort of animated feel. One of the things I really like about the foam as a substrate is because it's porous, the paint sort of sits on the surface, but you can still see some of the color coming through from the inside. Uh, it lends the fish this almost translucent luminosity that's really great for this animal in particular.
in. So I'm pretty much done with the detailings of the main overall fish. And I was heavily inspired by sort of the, on, like an Oni. I wanted to try to make, since it's got teeth and everything, maybe make it look more demonic. And so I've got um, this craft foam that I've cut out and done sort of fine details. That is the eyeball that I'm gonna be placing in the center here, as well as just eyebrows and little extra, you know, details, kind of similar to that, what you've seen in like, say a Japanese wood block, except layered on top to give it some more dimensionality and such. And so I'm gonna be hot gluing this guy on and just seeing how it goes. Something like that. I can kind of sort of finesse it to what I want. And then the eye, we'll see right there. Something like that. Yeah, give it that angular. Okay, so we masked this off so that we can do the fun sprays and have you, and since now it's, we're good to go, um, we're gonna start unveiling it. Oh, I can't wait it's to me. see. It's like an unveiling after plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, except teeth were lost instead of gained. It's just had braces for four years and finally gets to see the results of all its suffering. Oh gosh, with a million cavities apparently. <laughs> Oh my god. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird, I love it. Oh my gosh. This is great. No, it is so creepy, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I want your soul. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Uh, well, off camera, I did some preliminary draping on No Face here, and I'm kind of excited about how it's starting to look. Deceptively simple, really, really hard to execute, but uh, I'm about to put this on and just try out the overall arrangement before committing to it by sewing. Okay, here we go. I'm not even sure how to get in. Let's see what's happening in here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. All right. That feels very good. The question is, can I stick an arm out of here? Let's see. Hmm. I, I don't know if this no face has arms. I mean, I can kind of do a fake arm here, but that's sort of weird, isn't it? Maybe I've got to do them out of, out of, out of here, like here. <sighs> yeah, maybe that's how I have to do it. Okay, I'll work that out later. All right, here we go. Here's the first mouth test. Are you guys ready? Then! What have you done to me? Ah, give me something to eat. I'm hungry. I want to eat. I'm going to give it away with my voice right away. <laughs> I should have a frog. That's the first thing he eats. The frog. Oh, I felt pretty successful. I think I can now pin and sew my drapes, and then I have to figure out what to do with the arms. All right, I'm about to do the, what I think is one of the final dress tests of No Face before I call it done, but I wanted to walk you through some of the problem solving that I've been doing. Um, some of the early tests I was doing with the mechanism were with this, a four-way stretch uh, Lycra spandex that's black and really nice. And one of the problems I had with it was it was actually too smooth. Uh, it showed the seams and I felt like I could see too much of the structure of the, of the draping. So uh, I asked uh, my shop assistants for a, a compendium of some velvets from local fabric stores and we got this wonderful thing. This is what ended up becoming the velvet of the inside of the mouth there. Yeah. 
Uh, and then uh, I asked to look at the black velvets and I was looking at them and I looked at this one and I really liked its brownness. There's a way in which, there's a way in which black, super, super black is cold and doesn't feel quite natural. I mean, unless it's like a raven or something, but this brown felt like a seal pelt or something. So we bought 10 yards of brown crushed velvet and that is now what No Face is clad in. Uh, I've got my right arm covered because that will be my active arm. The left arm is uh, uh, just vestigial. Just gonna sit there. Uh, I'm going to try and eat a fish. Let's just see how this goes. This is a, a test of the mechanism and a test of how this looks. And depending on how it looks to me on the camera, we're almost there. I think I have to kind of crawl into the environment that is no face. Oh, okay. So, left side belt on, right side belt on. Oh, I can see my armhole from here. So I'm gonna try and feed out of it. There we go. All right. So now I have a fake arm and a real arm. Fake arm, real arm. And no face is ready to animate. Animate. Where is some food? I'm hungry. Ah, rum, rum. Is it possible to grab the fish from in here? Let's see. There we go. <laughs> Did that work? Kinda. Okay, I think No Face, the monster, is ready for prime time. Um, this build has kicked my ass. I thought it would be like three days maybe in and out and it's been more like eight. Yeah, it's well more than twice as much time and energy as I thought it would, but I'm really pleased with the result. What's that? I am really pleased with the result. Yeah, the mouth is, it feels great. It actually reminds me, weirdly, of the Muppet Sweetums, the big monster. I realized that Sweetums has a secondary lip motion and I'm like doing a Muppet callback with this. But like, I've, I've, added all the final details. The uh, little epiglottis there, the Bugs Bunny back of the throat, lines on the uh, roof of No Face's mouth. These are clearly visible in the animation and my, uh, my reference photos. And then I've also added a little bit of yellow to the Delrin teeth to just make them a little grosser. And uh, I've mostly hidden the mechanics, although you can still hear them. That's just part of the cost of business. Uh, at any rate, because No Face, when he is in this monster phase, wants to eat everything because he thinks that eating will bring him comfort, don't we all? Uh, the problem arose of what should No Face eat? So I bought some fake peaches that he could enjoy and then I could literally grab from the back and whoop, take down. But Jen and Mel have been working on some very cartoon specific items for No Face to eat and I have not yet glimpsed them and I'm very excited about what No Face's meal is gonna look like. Oh my gosh. Oh, one of the little chicken people you see from Spirited Away. Oh my God. This is amazing, you guys. We have tons of fish. Yeah. Koi and skeleton fish and, a and a <laughs> this looks actually delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday cake. <sighs> and just for some vegetables. Oh my god, you guys had so Variety. much fun. This is great. I want to build everything in foam now. <laughs> yeah. You had not played with Matt. So describe the technique by which you built these things. Well, we we started with blocks of furniture foam and sort of carved away at them roughly with a foam knife and the bandsaw, and then sanded down all the shapes, and then did a lot of paint deal detailing yeah, with lots of paint, airbrush, spray paint, spray paint. You did a lot of other detail. Uh, yeah, like worked with um, craft foam actually yeah. a lot, and so I just add little detailings on top, and then and the human teeth. Oh yes, for the, the human teeth. Sickening Don't, gross not. factor. That's brilliant. Not the good thing to eat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mattress foam that the mattress place just gave us because yeah. they had it in their recycling pile. Yep, this was just trash mattress foam, oh furniture my gosh. foam. These are so beautiful. Wow. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with like templates and stencils to do the airbrushing and 
Right, right, right. I saw some of the sample pieces of foam you guys were doing mm -hmm. airbrush tests on. It's just so, like, oh, it's so much more elaborate than I would have gotten, which is amazing. Like, that's thrilling to me. You know, the goal when you when you work with, the goal in collaboration is better than the sum of its parts, and I would not have come up with anything like this. I love the birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a paint drip that dried. There was a whole bunch of paint that dried up on the cardboard, and I was like, I'll just cut it out and drizzle some more hot glue on it, and that's what the icing is on the top. Oh, it is? Uh-huh. And that's... wire, these are little snippets of, of oh, electrical. Oh, the jimmies are wires? Yeah. <laughs> I was oh just looking God. around for anything I could find in here that would be theatrical and food-like. <laughs> I just, I love him. So I just love hilarious. how derpy he is. He's so cute. Uh, <laughs> how can you eat him? He's so cute. Oh, That's I'm the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I want to do a test, so I want to put him on and just see what it's like for me to gather one of these into myself and just try it. Uh, and hopefully maybe we'll give some people at Comic-Con some f stuff to feed me. Yes. What is, is that craft foam as yep. well? Yeah, craft foam with acrylic paint wow. on it. That's awesome. This this is, I'm so thrilled. This, <laughs> the, the single eye human <laughs> This is nightmare fuel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, why not demon fish? Why not? <laughs> oh, I just touched this palette. That's <laughs> 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 ah. Yummy fish! Mm. And I can grab it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. Uh. Mm, nom, 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 nom. I love carrots. More! More! Nom, 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 nom. How does it look, you guys? Is it is it is it kind of working? It's yeah. so grotesque when it's yeah. chewing. Really? Can, oh yeah, yeah, you can see him chomping on it. It's oh, like... that's so cool. <laughs> and that bottom lip is still working and not failing. Mm. I'm very happy about that. I can also see pretty well. All right, I think it's time to go to Comic Con. 